And hello everybody, and welcome to a special uh, Space Engineers uh, starter mission for the Lone Engineer. So, as you can see, I am in the learning to survive scenario. I will be posting in the description down below the actual mods that I use. I'm not able to all use all the mods that I would normally use in this scenario because some of the mods are now starting to break the scenario. So I have to be careful which ones I load and which ones I don't load. Uh, so, uh, this is, we've been, I have been sent here by Starfleet. Uh, you can complete all the tasks here and to eradicate the pirates in the area, which are plaguing the planet uh, within the, in this uh, star system. Uh, so, once I've completed that mission, uh, there will be a shuttle here waiting. Um, I will have to fly back here and uh, pick a shuttle here will meet me, take me to my first, to the engineer's first mission. <coughs> so, uh, my goals for today are going to be, I'm going to complete the task here, take our first ship, select a, the construction ship, modify it, salvage some parts from the construction hangar, uh, move off to uh, pressurization and the advanced um, production, grab everything from those two facilities, fly all the way back here, and start uh, converting this into a base. Um, and then... Um, Turning it into a small base and shipyard. That way I am going to build a modified version of the, or live build a modified version of the, uh, one of Keen's ships, the Challenger. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> modified by, it's going to be a little bit wider. And it's going to be, I uh, have, um, planet bombardment capabilities. So I'm going to bombard the planet from space. Vices uh, doing it from uh, going down to the planet. Uh, this scenario is, is one of the scenarios you do not have to fully complete the scenario in order to uh, you don't need to complete the scenario. It is not mandatory for you to complete the scenario. Um, if you're logging in for the first time and playing uh, Space Engineers for the first time, I highly recommend you play First Jump. Uh, it gives you a the basic engineering mechanics of the game, uh, how to move around, how to use weapons, so on and so forth. Um, Learning to Survive is a the second tutorial I would recommend. It is a the actual mechanics of the survival mechanics of the game. It's the name, Learning to Survive. It teaches you the uh, importance of solar panels, all the equipment that you see here on this platform, and the equipment on every other platform uh, here. Uh, building ships, uh, creating an airtight space, um, the different production facilities that you have, uh, refineries, assemblers, basic refineries, basic assemblers, uh, the survival kits, med kits, uh, medical stations, so on and so forth and then you take you take all that knowledge that you gain and apply it to your game but there's earth there our goal is to go it will be to go there destroy a pirate base and move on from there uh, we will then face a boss and so on and so forth uh, but so um, all right, let's get on with the task. I have everything hidden right now to give me a nice little picture because, you know, I first start up and I've got all these on my HUD, you know, it's a little irritating. We will slowly but surely uh, be getting rid of a, a lot of these as we complete each task. Each one of these little orange icons will disappear. Uh, we will see more once we get into a specific range of a, uh, of a new task. Uh, uh, they've also got, by default, uh, random encounters and uh, cargo ships enabled in this in this scenario now. So, 
be mindful that you might have some uh, friend unfriendly show up from time to time. <coughs> here. I also recommend it if this is your first time playing to uh, play the uh, Space Engineers uh, vanilla. That way you get an idea of uh, their limitations or the game's limitations uh, of stuff that you can build. Uh, and the basic tools available that you have in your inventory uh, because the biggest thing uh, about mods uh, are modifying a the Space Engineers game itself is that uh, if you go straight into modding you really don't uh, have an idea if it's the base game having a problem or if it's uh, the, your, the mod that you're using uh, so um, I highly recommend uh, play through a little bit of the of the uh, learning to survive scenario. Again, you don't have to fully complete it. Uh, you can always leave it and come back to it later or just not complete it at all. Uh, the biggest thing I'd say is complete the scenario because you get a free suit at the end of it, um, which is the, ve the veteran suit. Um, and then, you know, Create your own world. Start your own survival series. Uh, they've got uh, once you get a better handle on how you want to play in the game or how you want to set things up, uh, go into uh, your settings, change it to experimental mode, and uh, go grab some mods. Uh, go and grab some of the scenarios that they have out there. Uh, some of them still work. Some of them don't work. Uh, but that's a chance with uh, anything that you're going to add into the game. Sometimes it works, sometimes it won't work. Uh, all right, let's move on to this. This is their iron. I have to go up our inventory because one of the mods I have on is auto mo uh, auto collect. So while I'm drilling, I'm automatically collecting everything I'm drilling. I've also changed my inventory size, so uh, I don't have a standard inventory size. I have 4,000 liters. I have the max inventory. Uh, I should have left it full. That's running as well. There we go. 
All right, so I only have one task left to complete, and then I can go off and get my construction ship. There we go. All right, let's just make some modifications uh, to the control bar in here. I set up my thruster groups the way I did is because uh, I've watched uh, some of the streamers I watch, uh, Captain Shack and the Armco uh, group, uh, Wasted Spaces crew, and then uh, the Zebra Monkeys crew, uh, split mainly Squid and Cat Pack. Uh, I've watched how they uh, fly their ships around uh, the biggest uh, prior to, to the uh, I will never shut my dampeners off other than King Scalpler's house automatically shutting them off for you when you die uh, when you respawn uh, is Captain Shack every time it seems that uh, he gets comfortable with flying around in a, in a ship or in a vehicle or on a, on a ship without his dampeners on uh, he tragically loses it because he forgot his dampeners were off and he crashes it into something so I set up all thrusters for one control and then my braking thrusters. That way, if I uh, then uh, uh, separately, well, I have all my thrusters. So if I uh, put a landing gear on or I add a docking clamp to it um, and I dock to something, I can shut the thrusters off. I'm not burning uh, excess power. Uh, uh, the downside to shutting your dampeners off. Uh, while flying is that uh, if you decide you want to change direction uh, you have to boost in that direction uh, means that if you're already at a hundred uh, at the max speed for the game which is a hundred kilometer uh, 100 meters a second uh, you, you're not going to uh, it's going to take a while for the ship to change course uh, so you'll have to turn your dampers back on slow down change direction and then speed back up uh, but if you group your braking thrusters or the ones that are facing uh, thrusters that are facing forward uh, to the front of it forward to the front of the ship uh, you can uh, group those as your braking thrusters to slow you down and instead of uh, turning off your dampeners uh, while flying you shut your braking thrusters off so you can still maneuver uh, uh, in directions without really changing your speed as much. And then uh, your ship will, uh, with the other thrusters on, and it will auto-correct uh, you from sliding in that uh, direction you were originally facing. So it's a nice little feature with the braking thrusters. 
All right, looks like we got ourselves a utility ship here. This is the construction ship I was talking about. Uh, we've got to do some repairs to it. See what the tasking is. All right, useful ship, obviously. I'm about to make it more useful. After I complete the task, of course. You only really need to be able to build one battery, but I build them both. That way I don't have to worry about, oh, why am I losing power? I have two batteries. Oh, crap. That's right. I didn't build the other battery. I also have a problem with sometimes I forget that these things don't have reactors or anything on them. And I need to remember to plug them in to recharge them. All right. So before I go any further with this one, I'm going to make some adjustments to it as well. So now I'm going to take off and demolish. I'll make the uh, uh, modifications to the ship later. The, the stuff I'm going to grab... Um, later to the ship but I want to mainly gather resources uh, to some of the resources here to uh, concentrate more on building the base and getting my dry dock set up there we go locked it on da -da 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 -da. go grab some cannon. I'm going to leave uh, mainly the uh, steel blocks and um, the lights. I'm, uh, I'm going to be pulling things like the battery, uh, the beacon that's here. That's why I'm creating a GPS right now. Uh, the button panel. Uh, I'll, I'm going to leave the lights. Uh, uh, obviously, majority of the uh, armor blocks. Uh, things I'm going to grab the generators, uh, like the uh, grab generator, uh, the battery, the assembler, uh, button panels, uh, the H2 uh, generator or the hydrogen engine, uh, the cargo, the 
cargo box. Uh, and then uh, whatever I find up in the little cabin up above here. Survival kit, stuff like that. My inventory is almost full. Start the back, work my way forward. Although I already took out the door, so. source of power here. Oops, I'm in place though. I can tell you uh, at least one of the uh, mods I, I have on here uh, and you'll be able to tell it if you play the base game uh, the vanilla version of this you know without any mods or anything on it uh, you'll notice that uh, my tools are a lot quieter than tools are in the vanilla game uh, that's because I'm using a uh, mod created by uh, one of the zebra monkey personnel uh, by uh, Blitzy because he's tired of loud tools and it makes a pain and makes it uh, uh annoying for recording that you have to turn your game volume down just to uh get decent sound quality so people that in the stream can physically hear you so uh Inventory i'm using a full. mod called sneaky sounds um, and uh, it quiets all your your tools, the drills. Uh, the only thing it doesn't quiet is the uh, handguns. So uh, it doesn't quiet weapons; it only does the tools. So everything is not uh, obnoxiously loud when you're grinding or welding. I think I've got majority of what I need out of here. All right. <sighs> oh, beacon. I almost forgot the beacon. got everything that uh, I want to grab here for right now. All right, so like I said, we're going to uh, our next stop will be the observation outpost and then we'll go to the advanced production afterwards. And once I have the uh, stuff from there, uh, there will be a couple other places I'm going to go to. Uh, from here. Alright, let's keep going at it and just off to the right. Start off thrusters. Breaking thrusters. See, now I can move forward. And if I want to change directions, as you can see, the thruster on that one side will keep me where I'm moving in that forward direction vices. You know, uh, if I turn my dampeners off, whatever way I'm facing, I'm still drawing, uh, flying in my original uh, direction of travel. Now, when I turn my dampeners back on, if 
if I had my braking thruster still on, it would auto-correct and slow me down. Got it. A little bit. Now I'm going to start gathering stuff off of here.
Now, the only downside with uh, uh, grabbing the batteries from these places and uh, uh, turning them down into base components is I lose the power cells. Uh, if you want, uh, you can take those off and merge block them to the ship. Um, you just have to make sure that you clear out all the voxels around the battery if it's uh, if it's not in a convenient spot like it, it was here. Uh, you would have uh, to clear out all the blocks around it, uh, disconnect it, or grind this final block on the bottom off, uh, and so it's free floating. Uh, sometimes they may not free float automatically. You may have to go into its control panel and convert it to a ship, and then um, pick it up with landing gear or uh, move the ship over to it and then merge block it to somewhere on the ship, wherever you want to merge block it to, and then uh, do it that way. That way you don't lose the power or the um, uh, power cells in that battery. Uh, but I'm not really too worried about it uh, because of the simple fact I'm going to be putting up a uh, solar panel array. It's going to pull in so much power, it's going to charge all my batteries relatively quickly, really fast. Oh, oh, well, a lot faster than um, a uh, typical solar panel will. All right, now we're off to uh, advanced production. <coughs> each station has a specific, uh, each tasking area or each platform has specific tasks that uh, uh, it teaches you about. Uh, main base is teaching you about the survival kit, uh, the importance of an H2O generator, uh, regardless of where you're at, uh, and solar panels, which if you uh, generate power. And uh, you can only use solar panels, unless you have an abundance of ice, uh, for creating power in space, because there's no atmosphere, uh, so uh, your wind turbines won't work because there's no wind in space. And uh, with each platform, the, the tasks get you to uh, used to some of the mechanics with the game and uh, uh, interacting with the uh, 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 building blocks and everything um, and how to position things uh, from thrusters to cargo containers to all the building blocks and um, like I said you really don't have to complete this to, uh, unless you really want the suit uh, or some of the achievements that come with it um, but yeah you, you, you go in get, go, is, go to, to uh, uh, the first few stations uh, the pressurization one the main obviously the starting platform is going to be one mining and the construction ship uh, you can really honestly you can bypass the construction ship you really won't need to uh, need it and then um, uh, you know and then quit the game and start your own survival game I, I, when I'm done with this record, uh, when I'm done with the, this series, uh, I will do a brief series on how to set up your own vanilla survival game. <clears throat> and I'll also recommend a few videos or the uh, person's tutorials to go watch uh, if you want to learn uh, uh, or try to understand from somebody else's point of view uh, uh, building mechanics and things to do in the game. I would do it myself, but you know what? I feel that his tutorials uh, will hit the nail on the head, as to say, and he does a relatively good job uh, of it. So I, I'm not going to steal his thunder. I'll let him uh, keep all that wonderful glory. All right, now, fans production is exactly that. Uh, refinery uh, and production capabilities. So let's move up to here. Let's Right here we go. See, we put this where I go get you there. Yep. 
this one uh, shows you the importance of cargo, cargo conveyors, uh, and your production facility and how they work together. So inside this block box here, or this large cargo container, you have iron ore just sitting there. It's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to sit there. Uh, like conveyor tubes here connect the cargo conveyor uh, the large cargo container up to the refinery uh, if they're not completed uh, you can tell by either this will be, the lights will be either black or orange meaning that something's not complete in line uh, to allow passage so they won't allow anything to pass through it but once I complete this everything goes green and your refinery will automatically kick on and start refining whatever ores that are in this box automatically. Same thing goes for if you've got a ship connected to it and you're trying to, to drain the ores from the ship into the cargo container. Uh, this will have to be completed in order to build um, to get it to transfer from the, the connected ship to the cargo container to be refined. But I don't do that, so... Alright. Now we gotta build a... And connect an assembler. So we're gonna do this here. Do this. Now, one of the other mods I have installed in here is called Easy Inventory. What Easy Inventory does is that... Uh, if I wanted to build... A block in Space Engineers... I would have to place it, uh, go up, get the starting component for that particular item, like the, say, like the assembler, grab the steel plate, because that's what it needs to start it, place the frame down, right click on it, like I did with the cargo conveyor, go back to the box up here, uh, middle mouse click on the conveyor opening once it's highlighted, get all the components out, come back, and then build it with easy inventory go down to my assembler walk up to the block see how it's yellow click on it and I've already pulled out everything uh, I need for this block so all I have to do is put it down drop in the components and weld And there we go. So now these are the components I'm going to grab. As many of the uh, tubes and stuff. Again, I'm going to be leaving the uh, armor blocks and that. Because I really won't need those right away. Uh, O2 generator. Whatever's in the cargo container. The cargo container. The batteries. Uh, and then... Um, Now, uh, basically, the only thing I'm going to leave behind are the armor blocks. So before I do that, let's see. Instead of calling it a facility, I'm calling it a platform because it really is, to me, this is a platform. Uh, a facility is, uh, in my eyes, is something that's closed off and um, and it can or cannot, it will or won't be pressurized. But this is just a platform. So I'm going to go and grab this again. Now, before I grab this large cargo container, I'm going to make some slight adjustments to this ship.
first I'm gonna put the cargo container on the my hot bar and I'm gonna pull some conveyors. In order for me to put this large cargo container on here without getting it damaged by thrusters, I would have to move it forward to about here. Which means I need to get cargo con cargo uh conveyor tubes down to it, so I'll need two straights and an angle. So for the six one two. We hit five. And boom. There. Now when I weld all this stuff up, it'll be connected and everything that will transfer from the small cargo container here or from the H2 generator, which I've connected. Oh, actually, that's the uh, cargo container. Uh, it's in that cargo container, and anything that's ne any of the conveyors that are connected to that cargo container will transfer to the large cargo container, or vice versa. Disadvantages of not having a uh, grab generator on the ship. Now once I weld this up, I'll have a lot more cargo space and I can go gather crap tons more material. It also gives me other, uh, another docking platform for uh, some of the other ships I'm going to get. So our next stop will be the uh, remote control drone. I'm going to grab uh, all the stuff there. I'll leave nothing behind. Uh, and then we're going to go to the hydrogen ship. Make another GPS there. Uh, and then dock the hydrogen ship up to the uh, car large cargo container. I'm going to do a little something different in the station, uh, give you an example of what you need to do uh, in order to, uh, n uh, the other way of mo uh, relocating batteries without losing the uh, power uh, by utilizing a uh, hand drill, box or removal, and a merge block. So 
which means I'm, I'm gonna have to start removing some of these blocks here. I know I could probably be doing this with the build, with the uh, construction ship to make things go a little bit faster, but eh, I'm more about uh, I'm because I'm already here and being a little on a, on the lazier side. Go back to the ship, let the start thrusters back up, on dock, come over here, grind everything down, come back, dock it back up, or empty out the inventory. I'll just do it this way. Alright, so now we'll take our drill. Get as close to the box as I can. Gotta be careful where I drill at because I don't want to actually drill the block itself. Well, it might help if I turn my lights on. I want to try and get as rid as much of the voxels as I can around these blocks. Yes, you can damage blocks by with your drill. All right, everything's clear out around it. I'm going to open it up a little bit more here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the nose of the ship in. And I'm going to dock the batteries right here. Energy low. Uh oh. We go charge up. While well, I'm waiting to charge, I'm gonna be grabbing some to drink. I'll be right back. Wow, what the heck? 
Oh. Ah, I forgot about that. Oops. Oopsie. I lost it. It went flying away. Oh well. See battery, battery, downward facing merge block. I'll turn this into a point. move a little bit more out. I'm going to utilize my construction ship to uh, move it out of this small space and block, merge block it up to the ship. Now before I do that, what I want to do is go in here and see I can't move it. It's not going to move. That block is, even though the voxels are all cleared out around it, it's not going to do anything. Until I go in, go into info, convert to ship. There. Now it's free. Now it's floating around. Nice. See if I can get rid of this box. Nope, doesn't look like I can. Alright, so I'm going to have to do some finagling in my maneuvering. to line up with the best that I can. Oops, wrong button. more boxes. Now the only problem with the other problem you're gonna have to do is you gotta keep in mind that the thing you're carrying is a large ship and you're doing it with a small ship. Uh, so the weight's gonna be a little on the a little off. So uh I'm 
to get it positioned where I want it. Turn this off. Fly up. Turn sideways. Before I go any further with this, okay, that one's fine. I only have to repair the one. Oops, I hit B instead of F. There we go. Now I can go and do this number. Ta -da! There you go. Now I've got two more batteries on my ship, so I won't have to worry about recharging my ship uh, for quite a while. And also changes the profile of my ship. But I'm not really worried about it. This thing's going to be going away anyway. And uh, we'll get another big, sh uh, large grid ship later. And then we'll build our main vessel, which we're going to be using to bombard the planet with. that armor block. Now this won't fall off because it's merged block to those two armor blocks in the bottom and it won't fall off. So it's a part of the ship now. <laughs> Slight modifications.
Oh, I still got some more stuff to grab. Like a beacon, aha, uh -huh, generator, and a button panel. Now, I could go ahead and put a grab gen on there, but there's not a lot of space on this ship. Uh, hence why I'm not going to be keeping it very long. Inventory full. So, uh, I won't be putting a grab generator on it to... So I won't have to worry about half enough. Uh, uh... Because a uh, grab gener generators will consume a lot of power, depending on the gravity you have it set on and, and its uh, field. There, now that I've got everything off of that, all right, let's go retrieve our first our drone. And once we get to the hydrogen ship, uh, I will, uh, um, we'll stop there for today. And then uh, we'll pick up uh, when we'll be back on the main platform. I may do some uh, platform building off stream. That way uh, you won't have to sit through and uh, uh, judge my building skills on uh, facilities. Rather overshoot it by a little bit than uh, slam into it. facility. Find out what task we need to complete here. This one does not have a gravity gen, so it's one less thing we have to worry about grabbing. And then add an antenna. Now, what the uh, remote control allows you to do, it gives you remote access to the grid, so you don't have to build all your craft uh, or your ships with 
uh, cargo, uh, pilot seats or control seats on them. Uh, you can use them. And all you have to do is uh, put a remote block and ensure that there is an antenna on there. That's what this thing is, uh, is to teach you. Now. Ooh. Whoa. 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 Now, you can do this one of two ways. Uh, you could uh, just stand here and then uh, hit thing that says control shift. Once this menu pops up, uh, whatever is highlighted, uh, n uh, whichever is the solid color, which is your, it says damage drone here. Uh, this is the uh, your connection uh, to it. This is the remote control. If there's one on the uh, block you're trying to control on that particular uh, grid, uh, it will be highlighted instead of faded like these are. And then ownership. If you don't own the grid, it will uh, this it will uh, allow you to take control of it. Now I can do it from here, or because this grid has an antenna on it, so the antenna is off. Make sure that the antenna is on. Hit Shift K again. Now I can control the drone. Now I can control the platform, but it doesn't have a mo uh, a block on it, so I can't. I uh, control the actual platform, but I can view its inventory, or I can control the drone only and view the drone's inventory. There ain't going to be nothing in it other than ammunition, but I'll control the grid. Now I can... Now it's time to set up the hotbar. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to grab the last word, drone. Go in the control panel. Highlight all the thrusters. Oh yeah, and the camera. So now I can see, I'm viewing myself from the drone. Now, here's the problem with this particular drone. Every time I thrust, I go to a max power. It either means I have too much thrust in one direction, or I don't have enough power. do is on the bottom here I'm going to stick a uh, landing plate or a mag plate and I'm going to lock it to the starter ship uh, shut off the thrusters and then um, turn it off uh, it's got a uh, control panel here so I can access it to turn it back on if I need to uh, or at least turn the antenna and the uh, uh, the batteries and the uh, uh, remote control block back on.
Oh, my antenna is off. There we go. That happened time from time. You'll accidentally press O, which shuts off your personal antenna. Keeps you from broadcasting. Turn the thrusters off and hit the Y button to automatically disconnect me from it. Because there's no power to the antenna or the remote control block. I don't have to worry about it now. Now I just have to worry about grabbing all this stuff that's here. So, uh, as you can see, I've got a bunch of uh, uh, HUD indicators on my HUD right now that I want to get rid of. So, you could go uh, either press I or K, whichever one you want to use. I just brings up your inventory. K will open up the control panel, but you won't have anything show up because you're, you're, you're doing it from your personal self. Click on GPSs. And then double click on whatever one you, you uh, whatever uh, of the GPSs you see and it will automatically shut them off or if they're grayed out like that it'll turn it will uh check or uncheck or highlight or unhighlight this block meaning that you won't see that waypoint anymore we'll just turn that one off turn that one off and turn that one off actually i'm going to leave the construction hanger one on because that's going to be our way back home because i forgot to uh, GPS, uh, the starting base. So now the only GPSs I will see are, are the only uh, markers I see are the construction platform, uh, the marker from the um, beacon here, and then the red beacon, which is a enemy ship and any other uh, beacons that are orange uh, for the new tasks coming up. Let's tear this down first. Inventory full. Inventory full.
Now you're probably asking yourself, why are you destroying this one and you haven't built, completely demolished the other one? Well, uh, this station or this platform is a lot smaller than the rest of them. So it won't take me as long to uh, break it down. At least of the, uh, the visible blocks. There may be some blocks that I'm missing that are uh, embedded in the voxels. I'll get those with the uh, clean up. All right, off to the hydrogen ship. Energy low. And just in time. Energy's getting low. Uh, so, uh, one thing, uh, so we already know that this works to refill our hydrogen. So, another mod I have installed. Oh, it's not going to do it. It's just, it must mean that my Bibles and everything are still full. Oh, I, have a, I don't have a hydrogen pile, I'll just an oxygen. Okay. Well, another mod I have installed is um, is the uh, fancy hut. And so, this changes the layout of the, uh, the way the hut uh, looks a little bit, so that way it kind of uh, opens up my uh, field a little, field of view a little bit more. Uh, there are a lot of HUD uh, mods out there. Uh, they, you know, adds color to the HUD. Um, um, there's one called the Minimalist HUD. It, uh, 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 it, it uh, makes the HUD really, really small. But there, there are a lot of them out there. There's one that uh, splits the uses, and it's in Survival Impossible series that uh, uh, flashes warnings in front of you uh, when your H uh, hydrogen and your oxygen are low. You know, because the uh, suit voice is not annoying enough as it is, uh, at least for hydrogen. There isn't one for oxygen. But I, ha I like the fancy HUD. It, it kind of stays with the standard keen colors, uh, but it, it kind of moves everything outward of the screen a little bit. Now, as you can see, I am flying back to one of my previous stations because I have lost the beacon for uh, one of the tasks, and that's for the hydrogen ship, uh, the hydrogen mining ship. Uh, that we'll need to go collect. So I'm going to go fly back to the uh, advanced production uh, platform, and then hopefully once we get close, the uh, beacon will reappear, uh, and then we'll fly out to it. Uh, the uh, key thing to remember is, is when you're flying out to these different locations is if you want to come back there or um, for some reason or not, uh, without having to, you know, fly around blind. Make a GPS. GPS it, that way you can fly back to it because the um, tasker goes away and the beacons are only set to a certain range. Uh, it kind of saves the battery power because the beacons, they absorb a lot of power. Uh, hence why the starter ship doesn't have a beacon or a uh, antenna on it. Downside is, is I fly too far away from this ship I lose the ship. The only way I'm going to be able to find the ship is either I go in a uh, roundabout direction and I hunt for it, make a GPS where I parked it, or put an antenna on it. The only problem is, is that uh, this starter ship only starts out with two batteries, unless you merge block like I did, more onto it. Uh, and the antenna is going to chew through that power really fast. All right, this is going really slow. Let's pick up some All right, there it is. There's our hydrogen thrusters. 
So we got in under six Ks and under and the and the uh, the uh, beacon for it popped back up in our HUD. Now we can fly out through. speed and as the heavier this this ship gets the uh or the more materials i put into it the components and stuff the uh the slower to pick up the speed and to slow down it will be so that means i'm gonna have to start judging at certain distances when i want to actually turn my braking thrust on so I don't overshoot. Yay, it's a small mining ship. This is the main reason why I use the uh, auto drill collecting. Uh, is for the ice in space and drilling uh, ores in space for the first time. But some ice. I'm going to have to collect a bunch, but I'm going to anyway. Just because. see we have a broken thruster and uh, we have conveyor tubes we have to repair this will probably be our only hydrogen powered vessel that we'll have um, mainly because there's not a lot of ice ice uh, uh, asteroids out here there's quite a bit of ice out here uh, and then uh, once we find our source of platinum we don't have to worry about hydrogen thrusters because of the simple fact we can use ion thrusters or build uh, construct ion thrusters and um, We don't have to worry about, and we can utilize our ice for um, creating uh, on, uh, oxygen that we need. And I will say one thing about uh, hydrogen thrusters, they are very powerful. Unlike your ion and atmospheric thrusters, uh, which atmospheric thrusters, as by their name, only work in atmosphere, uh, rely on power generated to create their, to create their thrust. Uh, hydrogen engines uh, 
require enough power to turn them on and its thrust is generated by the amount of hydrogen fuel that you have so they are very very strong in here. lot faster with hydrogen thrusters. take this one and I'm gonna uh, add it to the bottom of the ship I leave here. I have one more thing to do. Create a GPS for ice. Alright, so uh, we have collected some materials. We got ourselves a large cargo container. We have components to build a refinery, a large refinery and a an assembler uh, we've got a hydrogen ship I really don't need it um, well we'll break it down later when we get back over to the facility uh, I may utilize it for a little bit of mining uh, or to utilize the components from it to uh, do a mining ship uh, we have a construction ship here or a uh, a um, supply uh, uh, a multi-purpose craft for uh, welding and grinding which will get modified uh, to have uh, two sets of welders and grinders that are detachable uh, and then we've collected a drone which we'll get rid of I'm not breaking it down now because we can use the thruster components that are in here uh, to make repairs to an ion thruster drill ship or we can use those components to build another ship um, and then um, offline, uh, like I said, I will start uh, uh, building the main base platform and converting up it into a actual station vice as a platform um, and building a shipyard so I can actually start construction on the ship that I'm going to utilize from bombardment uh, once I've got the actual um, building finished and the shipyards st uh, started 
uh, we'll go out and uh, on our next episode, we'll go out and complete some more of these tasks, collect another mining ship, uh, and some more components, uh, and a couple more ships, and then uh, get in, may get into some, uh, well, we'll go to the uh, construction platform, a, uh, a small craft uh, building facility, uh, collect our miner, and then um, locate the combat beacon, and then um, hunt for the um, uh, uh, the jump ship uh, beacon. Uh, and then we will bring everything back in, you know, and start doing a little bit more construction on the main ship. Um, but I do want to say thank you for joining me today. And I really hope that you enjoyed the video. Um, I will be posting videos hopefully weekly on YouTube. Because, uh, where I will be posting uh, most of my recorded stuff at. Uh, I will do all my live stuff at... Uh, uh, twitch.tv froggy in navy 007 uh, I try streaming every Saturday I won't be able to I didn't stream this Saturday and I won't be streaming next Saturday uh, mainly because uh, of my work I've got things uh, prior commitments to there that I have to take care of um, and again I thank you for joining me and in the words of uh, Zebra Monkey's uh, main uh, creator uh, Splitsy. There's that and plenty more to come and we will see you then. Bye everybody. And y'all come back now. You hear?